The Ouya Game Console. It was 2013's Kickstarter darling, a crowdfunded video game machine that was supposed to free the games and give a real alternative to long-established big-budget consoles. A year later, we visited the Ouya headquarters in Santa Monica, California, and talked to the console maker's CEO, Julie Ehrman, a longtime veteran of the industry who previously held posts at IGN and Gamefly. A year in, are you where you want to be? Yeah, I'm actually really proud of where we are. Last year was a lot about proving ourselves. So proof of concept that an Android game console for the television would resonate with gamers and developers, proof of hardware that we could build something that provided a great gaming experience on a mobile chipset, um, and proof of audience that developers would come and gamers would come when we didn't have millions of units to promise as far as a deep install base. Um, and I think we blew away all of our goals as related to that. With almost 700 games in every genre from a base of 33,000 developers, Ouya really does have something for everyone. The console launched indie greats like Bomb Squad, Nostalgic 8-Bitter Future Classics 1986 Edition, and fan favorite Towerfall. I think last year Towerfall was by far the game of the year in so many different ways. I think it brought back the idea of couch playing, um, that you can actually enjoy playing with your friends who are actually in the same room. They may not have ever come to life if it wasn't a platform for Ouya. And so that's what excites me and that's what wakes me up in the morning and that's what makes me work my ass off to, uh, to make sure that this platform continues to grow. The latest move for the company is Ouya Everywhere, allowing the Ouya platform and games to be played on any Android device, bypassing the physical console. Around the time of our interview with Ehrman, Forbes ran an article declaring this move rendered the Ouya dead. Other trade publications followed suit, but Ehrman says, not so fast. Ouya Everywhere is fantastic for gamers. It's fantastic for developers. It puts Ouya on many more platforms, which gives developers the opportunity to make more money. Mm -hmm. By also going on more platforms, it gives gamers the opportunity to embrace and engage in Ouya if they didn't want to go out and buy a box and put another one in their living room. Mm -hmm. Makes a ton of sense. We're not the first ones to do that. Right. Um, but people can question the motive behind that. Is Ouya successful? Is Ouya failing? Of course we're not. What we're trying to do is grow the audience. Are we going away from needing the console though? I mean, what's the... No, there'll always be a reference device for Ouya. There'll always be a device that is the best device to play Ouya, and that's what we're actively working on today. Ouya had asked for $950,000 in funding from Kickstarter. They raised eight and a half million dollars. Since the Kickstarter days, other tech companies have jumped into the fold with their own consoles, some with better system specs, but Ehrman says Ouya has something that sets it apart. I think we have the fastest path to the television than any other platform. We allow the most creative freedom for any developer and we have a large team to support them and help them make the game as great as it can be. It's the community that's gonna drive everything. Anybody can put out a piece of hardware that's got a Tegra device in it that throws an app store on it. That doesn't mean you're going to play it. Ouya's games are optimized for the television, they're optimized for a controller, and there's a real community that embraces the independent nature of Ouya that is winning. Future generations of the Ouya will also have better processors. Are we looking at a Tegra 4, perhaps? We are looking at a higher processing chip for Ouya 2 Auto, absolutely. Um, we want to make sure that when we release the next version of the hardware, it's a significant jump in performance and capabilities for gamers. You can tell us about when that might be coming? When it's ready. When it's ready. Yes. Does that mean a year from now? <laughs> no, I mean, it's something we're actively pursuing yeah. right now. Yeah. Did you kill me again? I did. So when you have a shield, just... I got to shoot and kill the shield, and then I have to kill you. I feel like this is like going and playing basketball with the guy who owns the Lakers. I'm Andy Reesmeyer. This is Dweebcast.